comparing obinutuzumab to rituximab, there are some um, differences in terms of the toxicity profile. Uh, both antibodies have a risk of infusional reactions, and anybody who's prescribed uh, rituximab knows that you can see significant infusional reactions. This is also true with obinutuzumab, and the rate of infusional reactions is slightly higher with obinutuzumab. Uh, the majority of those reactions, like rituximab, are grade 1 and 2, and it's un uncommon that a patient needs to discontinue either rituximab or obinutuzumab um, due to the infusional reactions. The management of the infusional reactions for obinutuzumab is identical to what um, oncologists are used to doing for rituximab. We do see slightly higher rate of uh, cytopenias associated with the binutuzumab and a slightly higher rate of infections as well. So this is another thing to uh, take into consideration. Uh, so again, if you have an older, frailer patient or someone who you think is at particularly high risk for infection at baseline, um, you may want to factor that information into your selection of which antibody to use. The practice within our group as far as premedication for anti-CD20 antibodies uh, consists of uh, Tylenol, um, Benadryl, and we give everyone um, hydrocortisone as a premedication as well. It does uh, reduce the rate of uh, infusional reactions and you, you get a lot uh, fewer uh, phone calls from the infusion room to manage subsequent reactions if you just um, premedicate with hydrocortisone. When considering the different frontline options for follicular lymphoma, it, it's really important to look at uh, risk-benefit um, analysis. And I think as part of that, you want to try to factor in how, how much of a threat is the lymphoma to this person's longevity, and are they at increased risk for certain complications. So on the one end of the spectrum, if we have a a person in their 40s who has no other health problems and they have symptomatic follicular lymphoma, the lymphoma by far is that person's biggest uh, threat to their health. And this is a patient that I would favor more aggressive therapy with and I would uh, favor uh, an obinutuzumab chemotherapy combination as we know that will decrease their risk of having early progression of disease. On the other hand, if we have uh, an elderly frail patient who's got a number of comorbidities um, and is uh, recently diagnosed with uh, follicular lymphoma, that patient may need treatment for their lymphoma, but the chance of the lymphoma impacting their longevity is going to be a lot less than the younger patient I referred to. So here's a patient where we're going to be more worried about toxicity, and I think we need to be more cautious with a patient like that.